Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, sure. Thank you in the Discord for the recommendation. Today is the 11th of November, 2022, and we're going to do an armistice video. The 11th hour, 11th day, 11th month, 1918, end of World War One. If you are not ready to learn, there's the door. Homek is down the hall. Or just chill, that's fine. Let's go. My name's Connor. If you're new, did I... Did I say that? I like to learn. Let's go. The Armistice. November 11th, 1918. In autumn 1918, after four years of devastating war, Germany was on the verge of economic and social collapse. With the spring offensive ending in failure, all hopes were gone that Germany could win the war. In late September 1918, the French, American, and British troops started the offensive on the entire Western Front, putting great pressure on the exhausted German forces. General Ludendorff resigned and was replaced by Wilhelm Groner. The whole army was severely lacking morale. By the beginning of November, all of its allies, Austria-Hungary, the Ottoman Empire, and Bulgaria had been defeated. Bunch of freaking not-so-great teammates. Defeated, so Germany was left fighting alone. Germany was also caught by winds of political change. Soldiers began to revolt, and protests and revolutions erupted in the big German cities. The imperial government was replaced by a democratic one, while Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated and went into exile to the Netherlands. Facing a total chaos in the country and a complete breakdown on the front lines, the Germans were desperate to sign a truce. Germany did try to negotiate peace conditions with U.S. Wilson. President Woodrow Wilson earlier in October, but were reluctant to make the great concessions that the other allies demanded. This time, the Republican government was ready to accept any conditions asked by the Allies. The meeting was arranged to be held far away from the eyes of the public, in the forest of Compiègne, 40 miles or 65 kilometers north of Paris. Negotiations were led by German State Secretary Matthias Erzberger. I hear this a lot, and I think about it too. Just imagine if Germany had one competent ally in World War I. It was, they essentially took on Europe by itself. And Marshal Foch, who was delegated by the Allies to sign the truce. For the occasion, Marshal Foch's train carriage was brought in as a place of formal sign. Didn't uh, Hitler in the Second World War, after taking Paris, like bring back the same train car as a sort of like stick, like a rubbing salt in the wound, like like remember the 1918 or whatever, and now you're signing it in the same train car. I think that happened. Don't take my word. Signing of the armistice. For the Allies, there was no room for any kind of negotiations. Instead, they just handed over to Germany their terms of unconditional surrender. The German delegation could only object on the number of submarines that were to be handed over to the Allies, but they were asked to hand over more than they actually had. The armistice was to cease all hostilities on the land, air, and sea. The German army was asked to leave the occupied territories of France, Belgium, Luxembourg, and Alsace-Lorraine in 15 days, as well as to repatriate all the inhabitants of the same territories and allied prisoners of war. The Germans also had to evacuate its troops from the left bank of the Rhine River and to establish a demilitarized six mile or 10 kilometer wide buffer zone on the right bank of the river. The left bank of the Rhine, the Rhineland, would be occupied by French, British, Belgian, and American troops. The Germans were obliged to leave the infrastructure of this territory intact with all its industrial stores of coal and other materials. The Germans also had to surrender 2,500 heavy guns, 2,500 field guns, 25,000 machine guns, 3,000 trench mortars, and 1,700 fighter and bomber airplanes. They also had to give away 5,000 locomotives with 150,000 wagons and 5,000 lorries. All of these had to be in good, usable condition. All of these requirements were made to prevent any German... No, all of these have to be in good, usable condition. You can't destroy any of the in infrastructure in the Rhinelands. Uh, I want to say, well, they already lost. I, I suppose they just make every punishment harsher. So I guess I answered my own question. Attempt to continue the war. In order to secure the safety of the sea routes, the Allies required Germany to surrender all of their submarines, to completely disarm their six battle cruisers, ten battleships, eight light cruisers, and fifty modern destroyers, and to intern them into neutral ports under Allied surveillance. 
All other vessels were allowed to stay in German ports, but also had to be disarmed and put under Allied surveillance. Finally, on November 11th, at 5 a.m. French time, the armistice was signed by Marshal Ferdinand Foch and First Sea Lord Admiral Sir Rosalind Weems on behalf of the Allies, and Secretary of State Matthias Erzberger, Count Alfred von Oberndorf of the Foreign Ministry, General Detlaf von Winterfeld, and Admiral Ernst Wanzelau on the German side. The armistice came into effect. Well, what is a count? Like, how high in the sort of ranking of whatever that I just like what, what do you need to be called a count count because the count something and then the dutch von you know it just sounds really cool voice crack du count something von something okay sorry six hours later at 11 a.m on the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918 even at the time when the peace was so close soldiers were still dying Almost 3,000 men died on the last day of the war. The last British soldier to be killed on the front was George Edwin Ellison from the 5th Royal Irish Lancers. He lost his life while he was on scouting duty near Mons, Belgium. Just 15 minutes before the war was ended, the last French soldier to die on the front, Augustin Trebuchon, was killed. He was shot as he was running to inform his comrades that hot soup was on the menu to celebrate the ceasefire. Canadian George Lawrence Price. Uh, obviously, any you dying at any point is tough, but is 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 horrible. But to survive that long and then finally have, and then to lose it, oh. This was killed two minutes at the ceasefire. Canadian George Lawrence Price was killed two minutes before 11 a.m., being the last Commonwealth soldier killed in the war. A minute after, just seconds away from the armistice, an American soldier of German origin, Henry Gunther, charged at stunned German soldiers who were aware that peace was just seconds away. Gunther ended up being the last American soldier to die in the war. The last German casualty is harder to determine as records are less clear. Some records say that it was 18-year-old German soldier Alphonse Baula. He was killed only moments after hostility ceased. He joined the army in August 1914 at the very beginning of the war. Many soldiers were in disbelief when they heard of the armistice as ammunition and supplies were still arriving to front lines. However, when the news was confirmed, soldiers across the entire Western Front started to celebrate the fact that they were finally going home to their loved ones. Jesus, just... Imagine being, like, especially if you were in since the beginning of the war and survived the whole thing and seeing all the crazy death and going through all everything you went through. And then it's like, all right, it's over. And it's probably like, yeah. Now what? Just go back into society. And it's, uh, ah, uh, that's crazy. Supplies were still arriving to front lines. However, when the news was confirmed, soldiers across the entire Western Front started to celebrate the fact that they were finally going home to their loved ones. The duration of the armistice was to be 36 days, but was prolonged on three occasions until peace was finally ratified on January 10th, 1920, putting an end to the First World War. It doesn't have the same ring to it as 11, 11, 11. Watch our other videos to learn more. It's a great channel. Uh, cool, guys. Um, you know, it's one of those days where if I can find videos on a certain holiday or whatever type of day, I like to watch them and learn about them. If you guys can answer my questions, I'd love that. If you learned something yourself, even better, or just as good. Ah. Anyways, um, I'm going to keep watching some history videos. I know I've done a lot of comedy and uh, other things past few, like month or so. But uh, make sure to get back into some more history stuff. All right, guys? Hope you're all doing well. Love y'all. Chin up. If you're not, you'll be good soon. Don't worry. See you guys.